We missed it. It lasted barely a month. It took us all by surprise. Del Martin and Phyllis Lyon were the first to wed in purple and blue. Radical activists, co-authors of Lesbian Love and Liberation, lovers since Valentine's Day, 1953. We missed it. The weddings in San Francisco in 2004 made headlines around the world. Gays rushed to San Francisco to wed, and we talked about going. We marveled at the photos of what was happening at City Hall, at the picture of the dashing mayor with the two lipstick lesbians all in white, and these two butch guys in a hot lip lock who weren't just hot for each other, they were getting married. They called their commitment to each other boundless. But we let ourselves be bound by our routines, too busy to break away, too many other commitments for us to make the trek from San Diego, and before we knew it, the opportunity had slipped away. We missed it. Just one short month after the wedding started, the California Supremes put a stop to them. And we wondered, what do we do now? Together 13 years, sharing a home, relying on each other's support for our dreams, all the while wondering, what happens to you if something happens to me? So even though we had said no to the newish institution created as a not quite marriage but almost option, feeling it was separate but equal in all the worst ways, we decided to declare our domestic partnership with the state of California. That December we went downtown and we did it. No ceremony, no witnesses, nothing special about the day other than the coincidence of it being my mother's birthday. My mother, whom you never met, my mother who once said to me, Mister, if you ever shack up with a man, you're not my son anymore. She had taken her own life a few years before we met, and the first thing that went through my mind when Dad told me she was gone was, I'll never have to suffer the rejection she once promised me. I think she actually would have liked you. I want to believe she would have come around and shared my dad's uneasy peace with my choice to share my life with you. Who knows? So anyway, we did it. We declared our domestic partnership with the state of California. At least the certificate was pretty. And we shortly talked about having some kind of ceremony to mark this transition. And by June, there we were, having something like a wedding. It was something like a wedding. It was in a church, Unitarian, of course. And it was in June, and we had a real minister, not just some friend who had filled out a form online to become a minister. <laughs> it was something like a wedding. There was a ceremony, and we exchanged bands of gold, and we shared our vows. It was something like a wedding. Fifty friends were there, including your best friend and my best friend standing up with us. Your sisters were there. None of my family was there. They had all met my invitation to receive an invitation with pointed silence. But the parents of my best friend were there, Rick and Nancy, whose house had been a refuge to me when I was young. They were there. It was something like a wedding. There was music. Neil Young singing Silver and Gold, a song you had sung to me to wake me one morning before we made love. I chose a Johnny Cash song. He said everything I wanted to say to you that day. I'll be right beside you, no matter where you travel. I'll be there to cheer you till the sun comes shining through. And if we're ever parted, I will keep the tie that binds us. And I'll never let it break, because I love you. It was something like a wedding. We even went on something like a honeymoon to Niagara Falls, <laughs> where we rode the maid of the mist and felt all of that power and all of that mist. And, until you've done it, until you've been on that boat at the base of those fo falls, you don't know why people go there on their honeymoon. <laughs> but that as soon as you experience it, you understand all that power, all that mist. So we were something like married. <laughs> but we weren't married. What to call it? Partnered, domesticated, registered. We gave up on trying to decide what to call it, but 
it wasn't married. Then three years later, out of the blue, the California Supremes opened the door again, issuing a ruling in favor of marriage equality, and we jumped across the threshold just as fast as we could. The marriages would begin on June 17th. The 18th just happened to be the anniversary of our commitment ceremony. Taking this as serendipity and grateful that it would mean there would be one less anniversary date to remember, <laughs> we are both guys after all. <laughs> we decided we could wait one extra day and get married on the 18th. But where? Did we want to just do it at the county administration building? No, that just wasn't our style. Did we want to do another big party like we had done for our commitment ceremony? No, too much planning. How about someplace outdoors, I asked. You didn't like the idea. Too public. Then an invitation landed in my inbox. On June 18th, the very day we wanted to get married, the big kitchen in Golden Hill was going to celebrate its 25th anniversary. It had been a special spot for us for years, a favorite place to go for breakfast on the weekend. For the two people in the room who don't know the place, it's a throwback to another era, a breakfast spot just down the street with granola and a life-size Jerry Garcia cutout <laughs> and bumper stickers on the walls that say things like, a woman's place is in the House and the Senate. <laughs> and it's all overseen by a beautiful hippie named Judy Foreman. <laughs> Judy the beauty to everyone who has been there more than once. Normally only open during the day, on June 18th it would be open for dinner and there would be a big party. This was where we wanted to be married. So I called Judy and I pitched it to her. Have you heard the news about gay marriage? Would you mind if we came to your party and snuck out onto the back patio at some point, just us and a few witnesses, to hold a little no must, no fuss wedding ceremony? Her response? Love it! The day arrived and off we headed to the big kitchen. A few friends met us there, including Nancy and Brian, a straight couple who had been bigger political advocates for marriage equality over the years than either of us had managed to be. They were to be our witnesses. Our minister this time was internet ordained. <laughs> the scene at the big kitchen was funky and festive with a band playing a wild mix mix of klezmer and jazz out on the sidewalk and dozens of people sitting around tables in the open air grooving to the beat. And instead of heading for the back patio where we could have our ceremony in private, we said, what the hell, with no small bit of encouragement from Judy and got married right there on the sidewalk with a handful of people we knew and a bunch of strangers who were kindred spirits, happy to be witnessing a little bit of history. What's a wedding? Is it rings and flowers and dress up and cake? Until you've been there, until you've done it, you don't know. I know now what it is to me. It's a promise. It's a vow. I took a vow in front of many people I did not know and a few people who I'm accountable to. I had already been with you at that point for going on 17 years. I didn't really expect that it would make anything any different. And it was the same vow I had said three years before, but there was something different about saying those words that day, and they have been a touchstone for me ever since then. I take you to be no other than yourself. That's what I promised you. And when your face lights up when I come into the kitchen in the morning as you make your tea, I take you to be no other than yourself. And when you blast Led Zeppelin on the stereo and sit head banging in your chair playing air guitar, I smile because I take you to be no other than yourself. <laughs> and when you have surgery and have to stay home for longer than I expected and need me there round the clock because you can't get out of bed by yourself, we stay home together so you can heal because I take you to be no other than yourself. And when you fly to Missouri to be next to your mom as she draws her last breath, I go with you. And when you get distraught because we neglect to pick up the newspaper the day her obituary is printed, I go out into the unfamiliar streets at twilight to find you a copy, 
because it's important to you, because I take you to be no other than yourself. And every day that I repeat that vow to myself, which I do most every day as a reminder, an affirmation, a meditation, I marry you again. <laughs>